Welcome to the Epic TV Surf Report. If you're just joining us, here's what you missed on part one of the hashtag Oakley Pro Bali wrap up. The Parco Push. That's called the Kool-Aid Facta. One surfer though, who doesn't need any Kool-Aid or any pushing from anyone, unless he's surfing against Parco, is John John Florence. Craig Braithwaite couldn't help but carry on about the first perfect ride of the contest. But how good are big moves? See John John's oop for evidence. Everybody was still talking about it on finals day. Her Majesty's royal subjects over at Carve Mag thought Double J might be capable of upping the ante even further. As we all know, there's always a chance someone like JJF can raise the bar. Number 11, hashtag no place to go, hashtag danger. And JJF almost proved to be the gift horse the English lads were hoping for. Meanwhile, over at the inertia, Jed Smith was pushing the hyperbole about surfing's golden child to new heights. And as much as it pains me to admit it, I liked it. When John Florence, still wearing a foot brace, having recently torn his ankle ligaments, came inches away from stomping a corked side flip in his round five encounter with Parco, the very fabric of modern competitive surfing was called into question. And since Jed was almost as in the zone as John John when he sat down to type his event recap, I'm gonna let him talk us right into the topic of the perfect 10. These are excerpts from the final say, the Oakley Pro Bali and the Perfect Ride by Jed Smith. I'm gonna bet that even Nadia Komenich could have executed a fade takeoff to barrel at Karamas. Probably could even have gotten herself one of the record number of scores in the good to excellent range that were dished out during the event. Komenich, of course, is the Romanian gymnast who delivered the first ever perfect 10 for her routine on the uneven bars in the 1976 Montreal Olympic Games. She thus introduced to us the notion that an athlete could in fact execute a flawless performance, an idea which changed the very nature of sports like surfing that are decided by a subjective judging criteria. Flawless, perfection, they're words that bring to mind works of unimaginable vision and genius, like say, the Sistine Chapel, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, or Chris Isaacs knows. Joel Parkinson's perfect 10 in round five against John John Florence in which he easily split a five foot Karama's tube and fell while attempting a roundhouse on a sublime end bowl didn't quite have the same air about it. But when John almost stuck his flip, the surfing world freaked out. Ross Williams was commentating at the time and let out an involuntary screech. And that was exactly the kind of response the perfect ride should elicit. We had witnessed a defining moment in competitive surfing, the coupling of unimaginable degree of difficulty with near perfect execution. Or, as the editor of Surfer Mag put it much more succinctly, if you fall off, it's not a 10 point ride. Hashtag think. So in the end, all the hullabaloo about the hashtag Oakley Pro Bali came to a head in a frothing debate over Parco, Double John, and what exactly constitutes a perfect 10. And fizzled out, like even a perfect wave must, into a crumbling foam ball before disappearing into the black sands of Karamas before the final day even began. Instead of taking a stand on the issue, the gentlemen at Surfline decided that their ad budget and ASP All Access Pass would be better served if they just let your everyday average Joe speak his own mind. Hashtag debate. There's been a lot of talk about the judging at the hashtag Oakley Pro. Watch John, John and Joel and tell us who won. And this is what those everyday average Joes had to say. Nuki's surfer, shaper, commentator extraordinaire, Lee Bartlett weighed in with this comparison. JJF did the biggest alley-oop ever in ASP history. 10. Parco got a barrel and didn't exit clean. 10? And some dickhead just decided to make fun of the judge's computer illiteracy. At ASP judges discover binary code at hashtag Oakley Pro. Get carried away with use of ones and zeros. Wordson may have meant revolutionary in this next tweet, but you'll get the point anyway. At Shockadad, agreed. Too many 10s. Compared to other objectively scored sports, 10 should be evolutionary mind-blowing. And not Dane Reynolds couldn't help but compare the whole mess to tennis 
again. No wave or ride is perfect. There is no point to points outside of tennis. Damn you, Drainolds! <laughs> and before I forget, congratulations to Michelle Berez for his first ever appearance in a Dream Tour final. A couple of mistakes in the final cost me the title, but when it's on, it's on. Till the next one. Next one's in Tahiti. Watch out the rest of ya. The Spartans playing for keeps now. And on that note, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, pray for surf.